Hello and welcome to the Cryptocurrency News Channel. Now, we're going to talk about other possible black swan events and their likelihood. We're going to, have to cover several scenarios, so strap in and we're going to uh, find out. Now, the first one we're going to talk about is Genesis and DCG, and that affects Grayscale. Grayscale is one of the biggest funds in crypto. If, if it would have to liquidate, it would really bring it down. Now, I don't think Grayscale will actually liquidate. Um, I think there is a very, very good chance that Genesis or DCG can go bankrupt and they will have to sell Grayscale. Um, they might have to sell their shares of Grayscale too, but that's not directly tied to Bitcoin's market price. I mean, like Bitcoin's market price is directly tied to it, but it's like Bitcoin's market price is not a derivative of what Grayscale is the other way around. Now, but that will um, cause some uncertainty and uncertainty obviously is always very bad for the crypto market. So I think that would drop it, but only to like maybe $15,000 or so. I don't think it would go below that because there's not a lot of other things that would actually liquidate because of Grayscale, in my opinion. There could be more knock-on effects from Grayscale. I'm just not aware of any right now. And Grayscale's own funds are actually secured by Coinbase, and that actually has been uh, confirmed. Now, the reason that Grayscale refuses to release its proof of reserves is because it actually can't. There's actually a clause in Grayscale's investor contract that says they can't release either the private addresses or the public addresses of where their reserves are for um, user security reasons, so they would actually be sued if they relieved, uh, released the public addresses. So that's actually why Grayscale's not releasing them. I don't think it's that nefarious. I think, like, they're kind of like their own agreement kind of traps them that way because, you know, of user security and privacy. So not that uh, surprising. So I think um, it is very, very likely that DCG and Genesis, I would give it like 70, 80 percent likelihood that they actually um, die out. And if Grayscale is sold and they have to sell their shares, could bring Bitcoin down to, you know, like the 15,000 area. We've been there before, but I don't think it would bring it down too much uh, uh, below that because I don't think Grayscale itself would actually be liquidated. If Grayscale itself had to be liquidated, we could easily go down to like, you know, 12,000, 13,000 or possibly less. Speaking of exchanges, let's actually go over exchanges that could combust. Um, let's actually start with some of the safer exchanges. Coinbase, I think, is the safest exchange. If it were to go down, you're looking at eleven, maybe even $10,000 or less. But it's very, very unlikely. I think Coinbase, of all the exchanges, is the safest one. They are the only public traded company, uh, and they have to release their assets and liabilities in a financial statement every single month. So I think the chances of them going down are very, very, very small probably the smallest of all the exchanges. Uh, that doesn't mean there's no risk, though, because they do have creditors, and in a really bad macroeconomic situation, they could possibly have to exchange ownership, go under, um, yada, 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 but I think it's quite unlikely because Brian, uh, Brian Armstrong said, and I do believe him, that if, even if everyone um, took their money off of Coinbase, this exchange would still be solvent. They are very highly watched and regulated, so they're not really going to trade with investor funds. And that's actually why Coinbase has had like business troubles keeping up with Binance, etc., because they can't really employ all the tools that the other exchanges uh, have to uh, can use to actually make money. They're basically dependent on trading fees, and that's why those trading fees are actually higher than other exchanges. Let's talk about Kraken. Kraken recently laid off 30% of its workforce. That's not actually all that concerning to me. You know why? Because everyone's laying off their workforce. I mean, in the crypto market, it's recession. In the broader economy, not so much recession. I mean, tech sector, I guess, but crypto market, definitely recession. And in recession, you lay off your workforce. It's not something that other companies aren't doing. Uh, Kraken is, I think, 100% solvent. FTX did reach out to Kraken for help, but they obviously refuse because no one really wants to help FTX. They have too big of a hole in their balance sheet. So I think Kraken's fairly unlikely to go under it either. I think they're one of the safer exchanges. And uh, if they went under, like the effect wouldn't be as big as Coinbase. Maybe you're looking maybe like fourteen, thirteen thousand dollars or something. Probably nothing below that. Uh, neither, Kraken is not as big as FTX was. The next one I want to look at is KuCoin, and KuCoin I think is actually like it wouldn't affect it as much as the others. I don't know if KuCoin will really have any knock-on effects at all. I think it's a little bit more likely than Coinbase or Kraken to actually go under. Uh, probably one of the more likely exchanges to go under, but even so, not that likely. I think they've shown proof of reserves, but unlike Coinbase, they don't have to show proof of liabilities. And there has been some rumors swirling around uh, Kraken 
I'm not Craig and uh, KuCoin, um, about it having trouble, but those have not been substantiated. So I can't take too much credibility in those rumors. So I think if KuCoin went down, you'd see like another bump to like 15K or so, uh, but not much more than that. They, they're not as big um, to the market as Coinbase. I mean, their overall volume might be, but just like in terms of investor sentiment, they're important, but I think Coinbase would actually be more important. Next one is Crypto.com. I'm actually a little bit worried about Crypto.com. Their CEO says their financial flows are healthy. I got to take his word for it right now because like it hasn't collapsed or anything. Uh, but I'm a little bit more worried about it than, you know, Coinbase, Kraken, and um, uh, and and KuCoin. Uh, I think there's more smoke swirling around it than the others. Um, and they, I think they did have some exposure to failed assets, but not that much. So I think Crypto.com is okay. But if it, and also if crypto.com fell apart, you might get like 16, 15,000 because they're a lot smaller than the other exchanges. So they wouldn't impact it as much. And I don't really think like, oh, there is the CRO credit cards, I guess, but I don't think that's such a big deal. I don't think the market would be that much affected. You're looking at maybe like 15.5 or something like that. I think if they crashed and the likelihood of uh, uh, like crypto.com crashing is still fairly small. I, I'd say it's like probably less than 10% as with, uh, as with all the other exchanges. But um possibility but not probability now we get to two exchanges that could actually be um in some trouble the first well no not two exchanges um let's talk about binance first binance has shown their proof of reserves but they haven't shown proof of li uh, liabilities like any other exchange binance did show they had like 71 billion dollars and that's however they did actually um pull out about 2.4 billion or something i believe um, I do, I do think they pulled out about 2.4 billion, um, about let's say like 20 hours after they put it in. So that gave up, uh, that basically caused some confusion. They later did say that that was linked to one of their Tron accounts. I think that has been verified. I'm not sure. I think Binance reserves are fairly deep, so I'm not really worried about Binance. I don't think they'll go down, but if Binance is the biggest of all exchanges, if it, if it went down, we'd look, be looking at $10,000 or less. So that. I actually would be somewhat worried about um, if it were to happen. But I think like the chances of Binance going down are less than 10%, maybe less than 5%. So I'm really not that worried about Binance. Now let's talk about one exchange I am a little bit worried about. And that actually would be um, Gemini. Now Gemini, I thought was one of the safe exchanges. And I still think the chance of it going down is less than 20%. But the thing is like, we just found out they have lost $900 million. Now, technically, that's supposed to be in Gemini Earn, but $900 million is a lot of money. So I don't know, will it affect their overall exchange? It's not supposed to, but of course, no one's truly 100% sure about that. I think the Winklevoss brothers just made a bad decision going with Genesis and DCG, but $900 million, $900 million is a lot of money. So I would be a little more careful with Gemini right now, just because of the amount of money they actually lost with Genesis and DCG. So I think that covers all the exchanges I actually want to go through. So I don't think the exchange um, problem is really that deep. Uh, I think like, you know, Gemini might be the most risky one right now, but I still think the possibility of it failing still under 20% despite them losing $900 million. Something bigger would possibly be Tether or USDC. Um, and those would actually probably be bigger fallouts than possibly even Binance. I don't think USDC would be quite as big as Binance, but you'd still be talking about $12,000, $10,000 in terms of price if USDC were to fall out. USDC is Circle. Um, they have had outside audits actually, a contrary to popular belief, and I think they are pretty much all backed. So USDC, not very likely to go under. USDT, a um, little more dangerous, but not all that much more dangerous either. I, I, think they've ha I've, I think they've had an outside auditor now, and I think they were solvent. They're getting rid of their like notes and trying to replace with cash or cash equivalents. But they have actually opened up redemptions over several months of, you know, tens of billions of dollars. So I am fairly confident of USDT actually not going down. And plus, the government's been after them for five years now, and they haven't really come up with anything. So I'm not really that afraid of USDT going under either. So like those stablecoin risks, I just don't think are um, actually there. I think it's less than 5% like a possibility 
um, that they're actually there. Now, let's actually talk about one thing that is 50-50 right now, and this could be the biggest impact over the long term, and that is the threat of government regulation or really bad ones. And we're going to be looking at the Ripple and XRP case. I'm saying it's 50-50 because I think it's a 50-50 shot that Ripple wins. Um, I think it favored them until this FTX uh, and like fallout thing where the whole environment is just turned against crypto exchanges. I'm not saying it's turned because it's rightfully turned against crypto exchanges. I'm just saying it is turned against crypto exchanges and things are getting a little bit more hostile, which is actually what has me worried. We do really want Ripple to win the case because if everything gets declared a security, um, you would have to register with the SEC first to be able to trade in the United States. And the United States does have a lot of crypto's investment money, unfortunately. So if it actually, if I, if you could only buy Bitcoin in the United States, Bitcoin would do fine, but the rest of the coins would not actually be all that fine. And I think there would be an altcoin bleed, seriously. Um, you know, the Bitcoin, the subsequent rise in Bitcoin price might pull them up anyways. So it's not a complete loss for the crypto market, but I would say like, this is a 50, 50 likelihood. And it's really something that, um, people really actually need to look at. And we want uh, Ripple and XRP to actually win their lawsuit because if they don't and everything gets declared securities, it could put us back several years in terms of altcoin investment. We might actually have to use VPNs via DEXs. Uh, maybe to get altcoins. And even if the altcoins essentially uh, register with the SEC and become registered securities, there's not that many exchanges that can actually list them. So we'd actually be out a lot of luck. Like coins like uh, XRP and XLM would actually be more proportionally affected because they can't function in their primary use case as securities. Other coins don't have that use case, so they're not quite as afraid. So 50 50. And that would result in a altcoin slacking. I don't think it would result in a Bitcoin slacking. And I think that one's the most harmful long-term impact. That one's a 50-50 proposition. So the riskiest things right now are, I think like everything else I mentioned has less than 20% chance of happening. Um, but the riskiest things are uh, that Ripple loses this lawsuit and everything becomes a security or all altcoins become a security. And that's 50-50 to me. And um, of course... Genesis DCG are uh, going bankrupt and then having to sell their shares. I think that would only be a fourteen, fifteen thousand dollar event, but I think that might be like 60, 70% likely. Uh, I'm not saying like it will dump to 15, 16, uh, 14, 15 thousand dollars. I'm thinking it's like possible. I don't exactly know what the fallout is if they just have to sell the fund, but they don't liquidate the fund. So that's what I have to say for right now. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe, hit that bell notifications button. Thank you and have a nice day, people.